it is uh, great to welcome to our book talk segment, uh, writer of another one of the great thrillers, and this one uh, really dealing more with the technology out there. That's what his specialty has been, and this one is called Change Agent. We're joined today by Daniel Suarez on the telephone, I believe from out in L.A., right, Daniel, from Los Angeles today? That's correct. How are things yeah, out? that's correct. Thanks for having me. Yeah, how are things out there? Sunny. Like Florida, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps so. Well, congratulations, first of all, not only on this book, but the, the previous book, uh, Demon. Uh, that was a, a huge bestseller for you, right? All kind of dealing with uh, technology. That's kind of been your background before you got into writing, right? Oh, yeah, it was. For 18 years, I worked in IT, and I had my own consultancy, and I converted that into my writing. So it, it really helped. And, and now, Demon was more about cyber, and this new book is more about genetics, biotech. I thought it was fascinating. Uh, I kind of follow it a little bit, just try to keep up with the news on it. But uh, I had never heard about this. Uh, it's called CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, -S -S Genetic Engineering Tool, right? That's kind of the basis of the plot. It is. And actually, CRISPR is an acronym. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And that, that's not at all helpful in describing <laughs> what it does. But, it, but essentially, CRISPR is a real thing. It's a genetic editing tool that was discovered in 2012. And it was part of a natural uh, bacterial immune response process. And what it does is a bacteria can unzip its DNA and look for viral invaders. And then when it finds them, cut the DNA and excise them. And researchers thought, hey, could we hijack this and maybe uh, put our own search sequence in here and make it replace and switch around genetics uh, within a different type of organism. And it turns out you can. And just last month, Chinese researchers were able to use CRISPR to edit out a genetic disorder from a viable human embryo. So this is a very real technology. I guess uh, in theory, or maybe in practice, it, it can be a good thing, but uh, as the, the plot of your book, it, it turns into uh, somebody stealing uh, your, uh, your, your lead character's identity, basically, right? Well, that's right. Yeah, Change Agent is a, it's a sci-fi thriller about genetic editing, and it takes place in 2045, and it centers on an Interpol agent who is tasked with hunting down black market embryo labs that make sort of vanity edits for parents who want to improve their children. Now, this is a highly profitable industry by then, and what happens is while he's standing on a train platform, somebody injects him with a change agent that transforms his own DNA into his most wanted suspect. So it's identity theft made literal. And this is uh, an Interpol agent, Kenneth Durand, right? He's your lead character? That's correct. And, and there is actually an Interpol uh, Innovation Center in Singapore. And by 2045, I make it the center of their genetic crime division. And I posit that genetic crime will be a future big portion of crime. I don't like to give away too much when we talk about novels, but uh, as you mentioned, this character, Durand, uh, he's standing, uh, what, on a, on a platform somewhere and uh, uh, coming home and... and Feels, uh, I guess, somebody stab him in the arm, right, with a needle, and, and from that, then on, it, it goes, right. goes nuts. The <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, what he does is he collapses and falls into a coma, and he later wakes up as a John Doe in a hospital, completely transformed, sort of the way a butterfly might undergo a metaphor metamorphosis. And if you think about it, what's interesting is a butterfly and the caterpillar from which it's drawn, they both have identical DNA. And a lot of people are surprised by that, and that's because genes can be turned on and off. They can express or not express, and that's part of what happens to him as well. When, when you write a, a, a story based on what's happening now, the CRISPR thing is, is actually a thing, you kind of ex expand on it and, and imagine, you know, make your own imagination uh, 45 years or 30 years in the future of what, what's going to happen, but uh, you use a lot of actual research to, to kind of back it up, don't you? Oh, I do. I spend a great deal of time doing research, and I think that's actually why a lot of tech people really enjoy my work. But the, by and large, it's mainstream readers, because let's face it, technology has an impact on us all. So I popularize complex technological subjects, and I think a lot of people really find that enjoyable. They they read an entertaining story, a thrilling story, but they also learn something. So often after uh, readers will read my books, they'll email me to say, hey, I Googled this or that in the book, and I can't believe that's actually happening. <laughs> and I really feel that uh, I've accomplished my mission when that happens. This CRISPR technology, uh, you said it's in China, they've, do they've done a lot on it. Is this something that 
in the United States or in medicine that uh, we're going to see soon? Is it being used now, or how is it being used? Probably? Well, it's Come. being used widely. Uh, it, it, they're looking at it for use in cancer research to mm -hmm. try to stop cancer, to basically create CRISPR tools that would go in and identify a tumor and edit each cell of that tumor to basically commit suicide. And, of course, that's a lot healthier for the patient than chemo or radiation, and it could be super targeted. So there's a lot of positive uses for CRISPR. But as far as editing human embryos, there's a moratorium that geneticists have put on that voluntarily, and they want to keep a close eye on it because, of course, there are many ethical considerations. Now, CRISPR actually doesn't take a lot of money or a complex lab to work with. So I think, nonetheless, we're going to see a lot of risky experimentation. It's it's something that I think will draw a lot of debate in, in the next decade or so. Yeah, I, th I think as far as you know, curing cancer disease, that's, that's one thing. When you uh, do genetic engineering to maybe create you know certain type of looking people, I mean, they did that back in Nazi Germany. That, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> that, that's right, eugenics. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Uh, it is a germline edit, meaning that whatever changes you make will be passed down to future generations. So it's sort of like writing with a pen. It's very difficult to erase. And if we don't fully comprehend how all these genes interact and we make changes that we think are cool or, or let's say we want to make people taller or live longer or have better muscles, there might be unintended side effects that will be difficult to back off afterwards. Are there companies now that are... Uh doing this to uh, you know putting money into it to, as a you know like a biotech business or is it still in the real you know beginning stage where that's not a not in you know motion yet well it's in the beginning stage but nonetheless there are companies doing it yeah. and that's because crispr is an enormous business and again remember there are a lot of uses for crispr in therapies and, and to fight cancers and tumors things like that so i think those are going to be the, the uh, first uses of it there are already companies established and there's already been multi-billion dollar lawsuits about who created it so you know it's it's going to be important when that happens yeah it was, it was i wouldn't say it was an accident but they were looking for something else i guess when they were doing this research right the original scientists that discovered this uh, they, they didn't plan on it yeah right. that's right that's right. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even going to say the name because, again, they're still squabbling about who it was. Right. So, right. <laughs> but I will say that there were two different groups of researchers working on it, and they stumbled upon it while they were trying to solve something else. And so many really monumental discoveries occurred that way. Just getting back to the book again called Change Agent, which, again, it is a novel, but it's based on uh, a lot of factual information. Uh, uh, when you write a book, uh, even though it's 30 years in the future, that, that, that seems like a long time away, but uh, it isn't necessarily. Do you, do you sort of invent uh, things that are going to happen news-wise then, or uh, how do you approach your writing at that point, 30 years in the future? Well, basically, again, I try to examine uh, trends and extrapolate just a little bit, because really, you know, 2045 is just 28 years from now. It's not all that long. Uh, but I do think genetic editing and synthetic biology are nonetheless going to make some really dramatic changes. You, know, you probably know from the book that biofacturing, that is growing products, is a big thing by that. The ability to create custom single-celled organisms like algae and yeast and bacteria to create products, whether it's pharmaceuticals or biofuels, or again, to grow parts of automobiles. If you think about it, a, a, a a mollusk or a lobster grows its own shell in very particular shapes. And right now, researchers are looking at the ability to grow products in certain shapes from organisms like that. Mm. And that's a very different way to manufacture things. And that could start happening relatively soon. Well, it's an exciting time. Maybe a little scary, but uh, I guess we got a lot to look forward to. Ho hopefully it'll be good. It sounds like it would be. <laughs> I hope this works out. It yeah. could be good. Yeah, it could be good. I figured the more people who know about it, the better chance for a good outcome. Change Agent is the name of the book, and Daniel Suarez has been our guest. Daniel, give out your website if you would. People get more information about you and the book. Sure, it's daniel-suarez.com. That's S-U-A-R-E-Z, and I'm on Twitter at It's Daniel Suarez. Great. Daniel, pleasure talking to you. We look forward to talking to you again down the road, but thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to dogmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at dogmilesmedia.com. 
This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.